Well, I enjoyed watching the two episodes that I got to see of the show. I think that um, it's a really fun, sweet show. And for you, I mean, you've played good guys, heroes, bad guys, villains, all of that. And you've done both exceptionally well. But on this show, you get to play the everyday guy who's a dad who loves his wife and his family. What was appealing about that for you? What made that something you wanted to do? I think it's a nice departure from um, <clears throat> some of the more actiony things I've done, and also the more more serious dramatic things. And of course, you know, during this time in pandemic, and because I'm a Hawaii resident, it was very appealing that they were going to shoot in my backyard. And um, and I think the the people behind it, the producers and the creators, um, I really enjoyed a lot of their work that they had put together and. And the combination of all those things and working in Hawaii and being able to play a local guy, I thought I could add a lot to it because I was raised in the islands. So, you know, the, those those are a lot of pluses, you know, to keep me on the board. Had you been familiar with Doogie Hauser? Did you know what that was? Um, I, I was... Yes, I mean, I've, I've seen the show. I, you know, I used to watch it when I was younger and then... Um, um, I thought it was very appealing, and you know, when they thought when, when I thought about a reboot, and then I thought about the reimagining of of you know a young girl, and then um, sort of the mother being more of the uh, uh, comrade in in arms with her, and the father being kind of like this bit of a you know different kind of character, more laid back, more like local island style kind of uh, surfer guy. I thought oh, this could be really interesting, so. I think it helped, I think, having a platform or having the foundation of the Doogie Hauser show um, really to, to as a jumping point for this. I think it really helps, too, that it's said really early on that it's like it was a TV show in this world. And the connection is because, you know, it's used as a nickname for his daughter, but it's not something that you have to feel beholden to, that you also get a sense of freedom with it, that you don't have to, you know, stick to a certain expectation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that, that kind of opened it wide open because especially with the kind of things we did in the new episodes with uh, Kami Aloha, I mean, we, we, a lot of it is a big adventure too. You know, there's a lot of outdoor stuff. There's a lot of, you know, in the ocean things. And um, I think it really kind of broadened it instead of just, you know, keeping it indoors or, or um, you know, in, in a house or in a hospital. or It's just kind of like widened the, the dimensions of it. When you have such a beautiful backdrop to work with, is it ever challenging not to be distracted by where you are and the sheer beauty of everything while you're <laughs> also trying to make a TV show? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're sitting there, you know, it's like beautiful sunny day, you know, blue skies, white clouds and light trade winds. And you're sitting, you know, in, on what is what is your home set um, or a rented house on the beach. And you're just going, you got to pinch yourself thinking like, I'm working and, uh, you know, this is like pandemic time. And you're thinking like, <laughs> you're like, this is the best, you know, the best probably it can be, you know, the, and, and I enjoy that the, that the materials light, you know, the materials, um, you know, family oriented, um, and, you know, all those, all those that things that come into play that knowing that you're, you know, creating a, a show for, for that demographic, the family watching it together. I mean, it, it's very comforting. I mean, it, it's a nice, it's a nice appeal. Your character is also very drawn to the ocean. It seems to be the thing that really centers him. Why is that something so important to him? Is that really, you know, what kind of, what keeps his focus in his life? Yeah, I think, um, you know, in creating, in creating the character with Courtney Kang and, and discussing it with Jake Kasdan and, and, and all that, we, we kind of came to that point that, um, Benny Kamiloha, you know, that's his kind of like Zen, that that's where he finds his peace and that's where he centers himself. 
So whenever troubles arise or he, he realizes someone else is in, in a crisis, he always says, oh, go into the ocean. And it's a very Hawaiian thing. Um, you know, the, there's been a lot of stories within the Hawaiian culture about people who have um, had injuries, uh, broken necks and things like that. And, and you know, the old old people say, oh, go down the ocean, you know, say this, say this, you know, little prayer and throw water on your neck three times. And just go sit in the ocean. And he's, you know, a lot of people swear by like not having to go through the, a surgery for an injury, and they've been, you know, healed and don't have any more pain. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, um, believability, and I think in, in 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 some of the stories that we create around Benny going back to the ocean, um, there's a lot of foundation to it culturally, and um, I think it, you know, creates a very authentic authentic Hawaiian authentic Hawaii kind of like uh, cultural thing that we infuse into the show. Also, um, you know, I think with Benny, it's um, a lot of it is, is the Ohana is his thing. The family unit is, is, is his value. Um, and so the priority is that he supports uh, Clara and uh, Pey um, Peyton, um, Doogie, <laughs> uh, Lahela um, in their, you know, uh, medical, medical quests. I love the opening of the show and our introduction to these characters going from, you know, this father and daughter surfing to then a driving test to her then saving someone's life. Because it seems like in the first five minutes, we learn so much about the importance of family. And then we see how she's, you know, this teenager who doesn't have her license yet. And then she's a doctor saving someone's life. So do you feel like that is really that first five minutes is a good representation of what people can expect from this season of the show? Oh, absolutely. I think it's so smart to just get right into it, you know, really, you know, focus on this central character and her, her, her wits, her, her talents, and um, also her youth. And I think that that stacks it up just perfectly for you know what the rest of the show is and all the episodes was that always the opening from the first time you had read the script or did they develop that more was that something that was always on the page from day one the, from what i read yeah from what i from what was brought to me for the pilot that was definitely um sort of the standard i mean that that was laid out pretty clear I think it says a lot that this guy used to work in finance and he gave that up and now he's running this shave ice flower truck <laughs> and spending time with his family. What, who, who was he before when he was working in finance, how different was he and, and what was his life like before all of this? I, I think, you know, building the backstory for Benny was that the, there was a lot of stress. There was a lot of um, grouchiness. I think he, the a little more intense kind of guy, kind of character, and and I believe he is falling into the rabbit hole a bit with that. And I think that there was at a point there was an epiphany that that came around like, hey, you know, it's like, wait a minute, I, my happiest times was when I was growing up in in the islands, and and so I think when he and Clara decided to have a family, that was probably one of the uh, key factors in moving back. Was you know he wanted to raise his kids in that environment, that atmosphere. And I think, you know, he also wanted to spend more time with, with them and, and be more, more there for them. And I think, you know, like he's, I think one of the lines I have in it is like my two favorite things, shave ice and flowers. And, um, you know, flowers make everyone happy, you know, and, and shave ice is a kind of an island uh, treat. So um, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of uh, floral scent. And, um, and I think in that way, you know, he really embodies that that sense like, you know, he's probably not going to make a whole lot of money, but he will make people happy and, and he'll see smiles on their faces. And it really conveys that sense of the aloha spirit, that that caring, that that giving spirit. So I think it's so symbolic of, of, of creating a character like that, uh, especially being the father of the family. So often we see families on TV that are dysfunctional or that have a lot of tension between them. And I love how the parents on this show are the hot parents who love each other and they have a great relationship. <laughs> what do you most enjoy about the relationship between these two? And what do you think it was that originally brought them together? Um, I think the differences. I think, you know, the, the, the odds that... Um, 
um, she's, you know, she's from the mainland and Caucasian and he's from the islands and sort of ethnic. And, and I think, you know, there, there's certain mysteries that you look into another person and, and you find that are like, wow, it's like, that's interesting. I've never knew that. Or, and you're intrigued by it. And I think Clara in, in her own world was intrigued by Benny's, you know, background and, and, um, and his upbringing and, and being of another culture. And I think that that was part of it. And, and probably that, that he was, she probably recognized that he was pretty flexible. He was pretty adaptable, um, being able to jump from an extreme world like finance, um, into a, a sort of independent, uh, uh, businessman, like a shave ice guy. There's something so fun and playful about the dynamic too. What, what have you enjoyed working about working with, Kathleen Rose Perkins and I mean does she bring a lot of fun to the scenes that you guys do together absolutely I mean Kathleen is just nice she's 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 kind of your anti-actress because she doesn't act like an actress she she just kind of like no airs about her and just easygoing and quirky and funny and and willing to like you know go the goofy route you know at the drop of a hat and and just has just has this kind of like ease about her going through it, and and also kind of combined with sort of a franticness, which which works so well, you know, for for the character. And I think you know we play well off each other. I'm kind of a more centered, more calm, more you know, more like a Benny. And and she's maybe that's why we're cast as such. <laughs> Did you guys have a moment when this whole family really felt like it clicked and the chemistry and the dynamic was really present? Or has it been more of a gradual thing than that? I think, you know, everybody had, uh, everybody was kind of grateful for being able to, you know, be on a set um, when we first started filming. And I think, you know, the gratitude showed that all of us came in with a kind of a humility because you know, everything was going on around us. And we, we all kind of felt like we were in the same boat together. And we were sitting in this, what they called a green room, which is a second story of, of the of the house where we were filming at, right on Waimanala Beach. And we all kind of looked out and we all sat around and and we were all, you know, getting tested and, and, and all that t- thing. So we felt kind of like, you know, a, a safe zone. And we just started talking. It was a very relaxed atmosphere. And I think that really helped kind of just engage and, and get to know who each other you know, was and, and each other's hobbies and likes and dislikes and who, who was on the phone the most time, <laughs> you know, all these, all these factors. Um, but I think that really kind of cemented it because there was a lot of familiarity, but then yet there was this newness that, um, you know, even with the kids, it's like fantastic to, to learn, you know, where they're from, what they've done, you know, what their aspirations are. And I think that really helps, you know, create that bond. Yeah, I love that these are three very different children that this couple has, but they still seem to really try to relate to all of them and to embrace how different all three of them are. Yeah, and then that's the thing, you know, we have the genius kid and then you have the, the, what we call in the islands, (laughs) kolohe. We have the kolohe, the the mischievous one, you know, kind of um in, in kai and then you have this uh quirky uh young one who's you know kind of has these fantasy things and and it, and that, that that that's interesting i mean it just having to deal with them at the different ages as well as their different personalities i think you you really gotta spend time with each with each child i think that's probably why they didn't add five kids to the to the mix <laughs> I also love that he can be the sweetest dad, but then he can also threaten his daughter's date with bodily harm. (laughs) Is it fun to get to have those moments too and get to show that he he can be a little more threatening when he needs to be? Yeah, and I think the threat is kind of in play and in jest, but it's also there's something, you know, there's a little underlying like, you know, uh, uh, concern. And uh, I think that's a fun thing because also like in Hawaii, it's a very Hawaii thing, you know, it's like, everything's very kind of like heavy handed in a way. I mean, the times that I was raised, maybe not now, but, um, you know, it kind of comes from that heavy handedness and a little bit of, um, um, you know, 
machoism, a little bit of threat there. And but then there's a there's a kind of throw it out the window kind of thing too. You know, just kind of like ah, just you know, it's all right, it's all right, that kind of thing. You know, but you know, it's fun. It's fun to play it. <clears throat> When you're someone who's working on a show like this, where you don't know everything ahead of time, you don't know where everything is going or what's going to happen for all these characters, do you like to have answers? Do you ask a lot of questions of your showrunner? Do you know what Benny could be up to in season two? How do you approach that aspect of it? I think I think what we gain to try and establish in building Benny in the first season. Um, it, 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 I kind of, you know, and the writers kind of give you a, a heads up, like what they want um, and where they felt Benny might go. And because I think we established so much diversity within the, his character, there's like so many places you can go with it. Um, so I'm, I'm wide open, you know, to all those changes and, 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 and new horizons and, um, you know, I think it's going to be fun to see even more, you know, the, the development of it. You've got quite the history with Disney, from Mulan to Jungle Book to Lilo and Stitch, and now you're doing this series. What does it mean to you to be a part of the Disney family and to keep working with them at different points in your career? Well, I think you never set out to work with one studio. <laughs> Just it just kind of fell into place. It's like, you know, back when um, Jungle Book came up, I think uh, I thought, wow, you know, Rudyard Kip Kipling's um, um, Jungle Book. I, I've always had a, a, a childhood kind of like fascination with that character. So I think when Stephen Summers uh, was putting it together, I was like, yeah, I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of it. I wasn't, you know, thinking like, oh, I want to work for Disney. <laughs> it was more it was more of the, the, the you know, that they had the, the license to it. Um, and then Lilo and Stitch was another, you know, fascinating foray into, into working with them because, you know, that was a Hawaii theme thing. And that, probably that was the only other local boy, Hawaii local boy thing that I've done, you know, in my career, um, uh, contemporary. And uh, that, that was, you know, another kind of, I mean, that was so long ago, it seems like. And then, you know, now, you know, I've been a part of Mulan and things it's, it, you know, it's interesting, you know, if I can keep it going with, with these type of projects and because and, Mulan was very challenging for me. And it's very, you know, it was really tapped into my Chinese ancestry. Um, so all of these things kind of like have bearing in, in, I think, who I am and, and, and my cultural background and, and everything. Uh, all those things are so significant. I love, too, that they have seen you as the hero and the villain because you were pretty terrifying in Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> oh good you know i think the director of that nikki carroll she really you know pushed me to go deep with with that character what and her her perception of what that character wanted what she wanted that character to be so that you know working with someone of that you know caliber in nikki she's um you know she's awesome i mean she, she just really pushes her actors to where you know she envisions the the character in the film are you someone who also has frequented the Disney theme parks? Were you, a, a, you know, a theme park person too, or was that not something that was ever a part of your life? Well, I think, you know, Disney just, in, you know, filtrates through everything when, when we are a child. Um, and then, you know, I, I had an opportunity after um, Jungle Book. They, they allowed me to take my family and my um, siblings and everyone to, to uh, Anaheim the park and um just run run wild and and you know get to the front of all the lines and, <laughs> and that was a real treat you know it was like a once in a lifetime treat for us um you know don't have to wait around and being escorted through it and and, and you know recently having it you know free-handed everything um so i think those are the perks um working for the mouse and uh, <laughs> um and you know so many other things i mean they've expanded so much since jungle book times you know and, and it, it's interesting to see you know uh, how, how massive they they have become at, at this point in your life what do you look for in a project and a role is there are there things that you know you definitely aren't interested in doing or is it just more about how you feel when you read something 
Um, sometimes it's, it's just an opportunity that, that, you know, comes upon and it's like, wow, you know, you know, I get to work here. I get to work with so-and-so, um, I'd like to do it. And sometimes it's, it's more inspired by the story, um, by the, <clears throat> by the script. Um, and then oftentimes it's, you know, I, I like to be, I'm kind of at that point where I, I really want to, I, I want to push. So I'm looking for something, you know, I'm looking for things that are going to like give me that challenge because, you know, you know, after so many years of doing it, you, you know, you can jump on a show and just kind of like, you know, pedal the bike and then you know how to ride a bike. But there's often times when, you know, like now where I think, oh, it'd be cool to, you know, just start learning something on a whole nother level um, that'll help me develop even more sort of your, you know, um, self-development kind of thing. Um, so I'm always looking for projects that, that do develop my character, my interests, um, that will challenge me and, 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 you know, make it, make it worth the effort. Like you feel like you worked. What was the earliest experience you had on a set that was a really positive, really memorable experience for you that you feel like you really learned from and, and that really, you know, what was a turning point for you in your career? Oh, it was early on. Um, it was early on. I was, I was 24 or 25. Um, I work with this director named Vincent Ward from New Zealand, and we did this film called Map of the Human Heart. And, um, you know, it was with a stellar cast, um, and it was traveling to these very remote, exotic places up in the Canadian Arctic. And um, that kind of was the projection for me back then was like, you know, if, if I had the opportunity to work and continue to work in this business, um, that was my projection. I wanted to go, you know, to these faraway places, places where you wouldn't necessarily go as a tourist um or visit and um and i love the great outdoors i love being you know on adventures and and it, it, it's it checked all those boxes <clears throat> i worked with the international cast and um and that was that was the the one that kind of made the big shift for me um and that was uh you know my first um lead first title lead in a in a in a picture and a feature and it was you know working kind of in a, in a big budget art, art house, as we called it back then, art house films. Now they call them independent films. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was that was a fabulous experience. I took away so much from it. And um, those are some also some gnarly challenges, you know, I think at that young age. And so, you know, when I hearken back to, you know, episodes in my career where I felt really stellar and I, you know, that I, you know, that's the kind of experiences I, I wanted. I think it, it, it remains true. <clears throat> I appreciate you talking to me about the show and about everything. I, I'm having so much fun with the show. I watched Doogie Howser when I was a kid. So it's it's been really fun to watch this take on everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it, 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 it's bright. It's colorful. It, you know, there's so much Hawaii stuff in it. And I think it, it's just going to add so much uh, layers to, to the Doogie reboot 